Hey folks, it's Carolyn here with Eric Holmes, who's creative director on uh, Batman Arkham Origins. And uh, we're taking a look at the game, Eric. Now, one thing that I've been really uh, curious about with this game is is what the, the world is going to be like. Because, you know, Batman uh, Arkham City was a kind of a, a part of uh, Gotham that was closed off. It had become a prison. What we're seeing in this game is a, is a very different kind of part of Gotham City. I guess, can you... Talk a little bit about the, the environments and the world that we're in right now as this is taking place. Absolutely. Um, where you are right now is you're in the island called South Gotham. Um, our world is more than twice as large as what you saw in Arkham City. And this, uh, this island's more of a downtown core. It's a little bit more taller uh, skyscraper type structures. Um, can we just roam around there a little bit more before we head off to the to our next destination and uh, maybe just go down to the streets and get a look at the street level so it's uh, a little bit more of a downtown core it's more vertical um, you get a lot more kind of um, interconnections in the play space there you see these kind of catwalks between the buildings mm -hmm. interconnecting which lets batman do a lot more grappling gliding diving um, you uh, you use the same core mechanics of using the grapple gun and the gliding but it feels different in this space simply because it's more tiered there's more different stages to go up to and then kind of like snag yourself on on the way down um, Another major difference, I guess, is the theme of the of, of the game. So rather than the, the world as a physical space, more the world as the world that Batman lives in. And what you're going to see in this demo is you're going to see Batman um, following up on a case file. So he's just finished uh, uh, analyzing a crime scene. He found multiple dead bodies there, and he has DNA samples from them. But he needs to identify the bodies. And what he doesn't have is he doesn't have access to a database of any sort. He does have great forensic tools. He has the Bat computer but he's going to have to actually break into the GCPD here to access their computer system and equip himself with the database they have so he can solve the case. Because one of the things that... Um, I, I had the opportunity to come up to, to Montreal and, and see the game recently, and I got the sense that one of the ways that, that, um, that uh, you at WB are maybe trying to kind of build on what the, the folks at Rocksteady did with the earlier games is maybe to, to delve a little deeper into the idea of Batman as, like, you know, the world's greatest detective. Like, there's opportunities there to... To maybe expand on on that part of, of who Batman is as a character. Absolutely, and, and not only that, but bringing that more into gameplay. So uh, we actually have these fully interactive crime, we call them case files. They're crime scene reconstructions. So Batman will use the sensors in his cowl and the supercomputing power of the Bat computer to generate these simulations of crimes that took place. And then he can use what he's generated to help solve the crime and bring the guilty to justice. And here, this is obviously we're here in the, in the Batcave. First time in the Arkham series, yeah. we are in the Batcave. Uh, Alfred is here, we can talk to him. Um, there's a whole bunch of features and so on uh, we, can, we can explore in here. So to the left there, if you put on Detective Vision just for one second, we will see the Bat computer itself and that's what we access there to, um, to engage in uh, some of the case files and we can access it remotely from the field too. Um, <laughs> Over behind us, there's Alfred. We can talk to him too. We can talk to him at any time. He'll remark on things that happened in the story. I just used his arrogance to my advantage. A textbook move a child could have avoided. And it's kind of fun dealing with Alfred. Like the, the stuff that that that, um, that you'll talk about with Alfred is on a much more human level. It's much more smaller and intimate, personal scale. It's um, I guess uh, versus the game is big and over the top. It's uh, you know when, you, when we're in the city and we're dealing with the actions of the likes of the assassins and the mob that are going on in the city, it's a lot more Michael Bay. It's big. It's brassy. It's it's it's, it's Hollywood movies. And over here, it's a little bit more personal. You right. know, it's a little bit more um, uh, Firefly. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, it, it's an, an essential part of the Batman character is is that the whole human aspect. And I think. Um, you know, it's it's great to have a game that captures both the the spectacle and the you know the action and, and, and as well as the more you know the, the the human relationships and the personal side of him. Yep, and the the personal part of the game is going to be much larger, I think, in Arkham Origins because Batman <clears throat> doesn't just have a problem to solve; he has a personal transformation to go through as a result of the events in Origins. He's not just facing a physical challenge, but he's facing. Um, something which will define him as an individual. Yeah, because because uh, basically up till this point uh, in his career, so this is said, I, I believe, in like year two of, and, and so he's kind of been dealing with organized crime figures largely, and this is really where he f he's really starting to have to face more kind of super villain type adversaries who kind of take things to the next level. Yeah, but it's the first time he'll he'll go up against what we call the masks. So right. people with. Um, 
unusual abilities, unusual skills, um, metahumans. This is the first time he'll face against anyone where he really has to dig deep into the sort of skills and the sort of personal reserve that he has too. Um, another feature we'll see in the back of here is, is what we call the training area over here. So this is an area where Batman will actually be able to access all the challenge maps in the game. Now the challenge maps in Arkham Asylum and Arkham City were all accessed back through the front end. So what people tended to do is they'd play the game, play the campaign, they're finished, and then they go and they, if they want to have more, they'll go and play the challenge maps. And they can play them quite a lot, they can play them for quite a long time, because there's depth there, but what they don't do is play them at the same time they're playing the, cha the, the campaign. Now we found that people would play the game through, be finished, but then when they go to the challenge maps is when they really learn how the game works. Right. Uh, there's an amazing depth to the, to the different... Um, the different uh, mechanics of Batman. And so we wanted to give people a sense of mastery when they're playing the, the, the full game, when they're playing the regular game. So by bringing the challenge maps into the Batcave and also having a new feature here on, on the right here, the combat training, we hope that people will, will basically become more skilled when they're playing Arkham Origins. Now, they don't have to be. The game's not harder. It's not to a point where um, people are going to get pantsed if they're not good at the game. <laughs> right. But the idea is that they, they will become more skilled and they'll be more familiar with the features, the mechanics. When a new enemy type turns up, we're gonna, there's going to be training here for how to take them down. When a new gadget arrives, the player is going to be able to use um, that gadget in a specially, uh, special routine there you can play. Uh, he'll be trained in how it works. And then by the time he's in, in the game, he'll know how to apply it with the other features he has. So uh, on top of that, when you're finished with it, you're going to get XP just for going through that training. Sure, okay. So, so there's a great reason to go there and play that training to mm. play the challenge maps and to try and improve your skills because you're basically going to get more upgrades for it. I, I got the sense too um, when I was in Montreal that the idea of of creating a kind of skill progression um, that you experience as you go through the game uh, that kind of you know the game encouraging you, your mastery of the, the techniques is also something that was factored into how the boss fights were thought about where those are kind of designed in a way around uh, maybe, you know, specific skills that, you know, th they're going to test uh, kind of as, uh, they were sort of described in a way as like master classes or, you know, exams for like yep. the various skills that Batman has. We were very inspired by what Rocksteady did with Mr. Freeze. and That, that was a great boss fight. Th that was the standout boss to us too. Sure. And, and, and we, um, we felt that it was a great way of making you dig deep in your skills for Predator when up to that point, uh, certainly for myself, I'd relied on one or two of the techniques. Yeah. And then I got to the boss and I was challenged to use five, six, seven of those abilities. So it really, um, it, I, I had sweaty palms all the way through that fight. And then when I actually won, it was, um, it was very satisfying. Definitely. So <clears throat> here we are in the open world. You can see uh, just how much bigger the open world is here. Um, uh, there's two main islands. That's the final offer on the top right, which is the penguin's boat. Um, this is South Gotham over here, and we're heading all the way to the south point here. That building there is the GCPD building, and we're going to use the fast travel system to travel over there. Um, now, how does that work? Is it the sort of thing like you have to get to an area through other means first, and then you access like a fast travel point, or can you hop in the Batwing and zip to, to areas from the from the beginning? Or we're we haven't gone too deep in terms okay. of explaining that to people. I think that's something that would be fun for people okay. to play in the game. Sure, sure. But there okay. is a there's a basically a territory unlock system. Okay. And so you'll go to an area, you'll play some gameplay, then you when you've finished it, you will unlock access to that area for fast travel. Gotcha. Seriously considering giving Gordon the job. So um, in previous uh, games. Uh, the general format for Batman gameplay, and, and to be honest, it's true for most of this game too, mm -hmm. is Batman has to uh, enter the interior, there will be a bunch of enemies in that location, in right. that room, or that corridor. Yes. He'll have to take those guys out in order to proceed, he has to secure the area. Yes. In GCPD, Batman is not going in there to secure the place. He's only going in there to go in and get that information. He wants to get access to that criminal database. So he doesn't want to engage the cops. He's He's someone who doesn't respect the Gotham cops because they're so corrupt. Yeah. They're so deeply entrenched in the crime in Gotham. Um, I mean, Commissioner Loeb, uh, yeah. who's the commissioner at the start of this game, he um, he's he's as bad as many of the crime lords. He's deeply involved in the sure. crime in Gotham. Sure. But um, he uh, he actually died earlier tonight. He was killed at the start of the game. Right. And um, this has left a power vacuum in the GCPD. And in fact, there's a lot of uncertainties exactly how things are going to go from here. Um, the worst of the worst cops that we're going to see are the SWAT teams in uh, GCPD. Whereas the many of the cops in the GCPD are corrupt and they will passively um, 
look for opportunities to take money from the criminal community or even normal civilians. Uh -huh. um, the SWAT guys are a very active and aggressive oh, part of force. And in fact, those guys are actively engaged in the hit to try and take down Batman. Can you imagine living in a city where like, the sw heavily armed SWAT cops were kind of just terrorizing civilians? Oh, anyway, who's gonna arrest, a scary thought. Who's going to arrest the police force, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so, um... Things are changing in Gotham tonight, and yeah. um, so Batman is going to have to sneak through the GCPD. He has to clear this rooftop before he can even enter in there. <clears throat> but uh, once he's inside, the rules change a little bit, and he can sneak through many of the areas without engaging the police, without taking them on aggressively. Um, although there are, are some enemies he'll have to take down in order to proceed. Sure. To oh, ooh! So, um... Yeah, what, what else can we say about GCPD? Well, narrative is very important in the Arkham games. Yeah. Very, very important. Definitely. And uh, one of the things you'll see in there is you'll see through the dialogue of the, of the police, through the, the physical layer of the location too, you're going to see that Gordon is not a popular cop. So I was actually thinking about that. Like one of my favorite Batman books um, is, um, you know, I think it's in year one where you get this contrast between Batman becoming this like vigilante hero and then the working class Gordon and him kind of fit, fight, facing the corruption within, within the police system and you know him as this like working class hero and um, so yeah this seems like a great opportunity here to, to to kind of get into that a little bit obviously that the, the tension within the police department. Year one is definitely a, a really strong influence uh, for us. Um, it's not a direct reference we're not no, telling right. that story but characters like Loeb first appeared in sure. there. Um, uh, Brandon, the, the SWAT uh, lieutenant I was telling you about earlier, he first appeared in there too. Yeah. And uh, the dynamics that we see between the characters in there are definitely uh, true with what we see in Arkham Origins too. Wait a second. Contact! Suspect is over here! No. Go for it, Batman. Yeah! <laughs> Oof. That's what you get for wearing sunglasses at night, my friend. <laughs> So at this point in the story, we're about 25% of the way into the story okay. here. We're, we're fairly early. Sure. You can, you can generally grade how far you are in the Batman uh, story by seeing how damaged the costume uh, is. <laughs> yes. So Batman has, has uh, run into James Gordon once before in the story when Gordon tried to arrest him. Okay. Um, Batman escaped. Um, and up to that point, the police maintained that there is no such thing as a Batman. The, um, the uh, Gordon is the head of a vigilante task force, which is officially supposed to be taking down anyone who's you know, uh, involved in the alleged activities of a winged vigilante, but they, are, they have not admitted to the existence of such a thing publicly. Sure. But that's going to change tonight. <laughs> I bet it is. Access the National Criminal Database and find out what happened at Lacey Towers. I need to find the server room without being discovered. <clears throat> so like I said, you'll, you'll see a lot of storytelling in the environment through here. You'll actually see a briefing a police briefing off to the left here, where Gordon's telling um, the regular officers exactly what's going on tonight. Yeah. And then later on, you'll see a different SWAT briefing where a very different message is being ah, sent. Ah, okay. There's eight assassins in town tonight. From the info we've been gathering, they're among the most dangerous criminals on record. Period. We've learned that they're all competing for a huge bounty, which Black Mask has offered for the head of the bat. Where do I sign up? <laughs> I thought he was a ghost. Hey, All right, cut the chatter, people. Myth. Our goal is to ensure order in this city. So our number one priority is bringing in... Yeah, well, they were sweet. Must you be so brutal, sir? These are city employees. They're as corrupt as they come, and they're in my way. It's another Alfred here talking about Batman's brutality. Another, you know, thing I, I got felt like I got a bit of a sense of when I was in Montreal is like, Batman in this game maybe, like, because he's not as established as he is in in the other Arkham games yet, maybe relies a bit more on raw physical force than on just intimidation at times. Like I've seen him kind of. I feel like in some of the interactions with criminals that I've seen, he, he maybe pushes things a little further than he would 
otherwise. <laughs> I th- to be honest, he uses those tools for intimidation, though. Like he, he does, he does. He, uh, the one thing I think that, I guess, changes the, the Batman of Arkham City versus or- or Arkham Asylum versus the Batman of this era is he has to earn fear in other people. Right, that's what I mean. He doesn't have that same reputation where he's a member of the establishment and everyone knows what he is. Yeah, so he needs to he needs to make it clear to people, you know, what will happen to you if exactly. you if you cross the Batman. So he has to generate that kind of drama exactly. in his mind. Yeah. <clears throat> in fact, we'll actually see a character later in this demo where um, Batman has already run across that character earlier tonight, and it's the same character we actually saw dangling from the clock tower in the earlier demo we showed back at E3. Sure. Um, that character has now been arrested by the cops, and Batman gets to revisit, invoking oh. fear in that guy to okay. get some more information from him. <laughs> So right here is the SWAT team. They're yeah. being briefed on taking Batman down. And uh, what Brandon's revealing here is he's actually managed to broker a deal with the Black Mask to join the ranks of the assassins. Yeah. And these guys are going to break the $50 million through the SWAT team. It's quite a payday. I've got to be quiet. Oh man, Batman's just got it coming on all sides. Yep, he's working alone, and uh, we get to see just how much he can do by working alone yeah. in this game. It's a very, uh, it's a very different place for Batman to be. Mm-hmm. But right. that's where he starts out in his career. He's a very controlling individual. He's very determined, and at this point, he's completely confident he can face any challenge down on his own because that has worked so far. Sure. Oh God. <laughs> To get Gordon in here and clean this, clean this department up. seeing here is another uh, kind of feature tying into the the mastery we wanted to build for the players you saw a prompt about the dark knight system there yeah what that is is that's a challenge system built into the game that will uh, always be running and the idea is that um, there's some basic features which it will start promoting at first doing things like counters sure and then initially takedowns and then by the time it gets to the later levels the players are going to be getting trained in more advanced techniques uh, doing predator rooms without being seen using all the gadgets and free flow combat Talk. Um, we just want to build all these tools that will help expose players to how deep yeah. the mechanics are. Yeah, and so to encourage players to change things up, to use different different techniques and so on. Yeah, well, not, not just that, but also to just basically be skilled. Right. And, and, and I think once, once you get skilled at Batman, it's very, very rewarding yeah. because they're... Absolutely. You, you can you can play a Predator Room just by going to Gargoyles, lighting down, kicking guys, and escaping off into a Gargoyle again. But there are a lot more ways to play the game, and I think um, exposing people to how that works, if they want, yeah. uh, will just make people enjoy the game. I, I agree. I mean, I don't think there's... I think there's few things more rewarding in games than the feeling that as a player, you are... you are getting much better at the game as you progress. I mean, that's that's why, like, Ninja Gaiden on the, on the Xbox is one of my favorite games of all time, because it's very deep. It's it very started scary. off just kicking my butt, and, you know, but I just learned and learned all these different techniques. And we get to see here just how bad the SWAT guys are. Here they are uh-huh. beating up some homeless guys oh that they've rounded up. <clears throat> it's... So that ties it back into another character in the game, which is Anarchy. I don't know if you saw in the E3 demo that Anarchy's there, he's in the game. Okay. He has a special relationship with the homeless people of Gotham. They really look up to him and he considers himself their protector. Sure. Um, which is interesting, because then we start to get to these grey areas. The cops are preying on the homeless people, but a guy regarded as a villain, Anarchy is actually one of the people that helps them. Right. Go lose focus! It's one of the reasons I really like Anarchy. He's he's like a classic anti-villain, right? Like he's trying to do the right thing. He believes he's doing the right thing. From Batman's perspective, he's not. But from a dramatic perspective, you look at him. There's a really good argument to be made for what he does and why he does it. 
I saw it, uh, on the screen there a mention of a concussion detonator. Is that uh, that's a new gadget, isn't that's it? Right, or that's, is that's, it? That's the gadget we picked up back at the back cave. Okay. So what um, what Vincent was using it for there is uh, if you sorry what Batman was using it for there was uh, if you threw it onto an enemy. Um, mm -hmm. It's really most useful in a densely packed group of enemies okay. because what it'll do is it attaches like a sticky bomb and it'll start counting down and after a short delay it explodes, everyone nearby that person that's, that's uh, got the grenade on them sure. will get stunned and blinded and what they'll do is they'll start swinging around wildly because they're, they don't know where their opponent is but in a large group of enemies they'll start hitting each other, yeah. they'll start hitting each other to the floor <laughs> and then so Batman can take a kind of tightly... Uh, take the aligned group of enemies and then turn the tide against them and seize the initiative. Sure. Sure. I gotta deal with this problem. If I don't give this bastard what he wants, he'll send the tape to the press. What the hell am I supposed to do? I guess you're supposed to pass out. Yeah. So what we'll see next in the demo is we're going to get a very quick glimpse of Barbara Gordon in the game. Oh, for the neat. first time. Oh, great. Um, Barbara Gordon's a very popular character, and people who played the other games will know her as Oracle. Right, of course. But at this point, she's not Oracle. At this point, she's uh, James Gordon's daughter. Yeah. She's in her teens, and she's just got to that point where she's starting to develop a worldview that's kind of different from her parents. Yeah. Yeah, she's a wonderful character in the comics. She has such a fascinating... Barbara. arc and history. Yeah, and a very important story to be told along the lines with, with Batman. Death, so, yeah. so um, we just get a quick glimpse of her here. Sure. We're going to see a bunch more of her in the story. Right. But I think people who are familiar with Oracle, and I don't think we've actually seen her before in the series. We've only I, ever heard uh, yeah. her. Yeah, she's only ever been a voice on the other end of Batman's communicator. So I think there's there's more to be shown with her, and um, I think people will find it fun. And later in GCPD, is the first time Batman will ever actually run into her. And um, we get this interesting kind of triangle of perspectives. We get Batman, who represents justice. We get James Gordon, who represents the law. Yeah. And we get her, who's kind of so far been following her father's model, uh -huh. but is starting to realize that if his model worked, Gotham would be a different place. All right. So, uh, well, thank you so much for, for this look at, at uh, Batman Arkham Origins. So remind us one more time, when, when can people actually get their hands on this game and experience it for themselves? Batman Arkham Origins is out on October 25th. It'll be out on PS3, Xbox 360, Wii U, and PC. And on the same day, we also have Batman Arkham Origins Blackgate coming out on the PlayStation Vita and 3DS. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming in and showing us the game today. Thanks for having me.